The United, United Nations is mourning the more than 100 aid workers who've been killed in Gaza since the start of the war. The UN flag was lowered to half-mast outside its headquarters in New York and its other offices. The UN says it's the highest number of staff killed in such a short time since the organization was founded after World War II. For more on that, I'm now joined by Tamara al Rifai. She's the Director of External Relations and Communications at the UN Aid Agency for Palestine Refugees, UNRWA. She joins us from Amman in Jordan. Tamara, UN staff continue to work in Gaza. How are their current con working conditions? Extremely difficult working conditions in Gaza for my 13,000 colleagues. Most of them are Palestinians from Gaza themselves, so they're part of the people who have been displaced. A lot of my colleagues are in shelters now, but in the shelters, they are still distributing bread, distributing some water, and the medical and health staff are still distributing consultations, including to pregnant women. But the general conditions are extremely dire in the shelters for people who are displaced and for my colleagues. Now, we've been hearing about humanitarian pauses that would allow people to flee into southern uh, Gaza. How helpful have these pauses been? They have probably been somewhat helpful for those who no longer want to remain in the north of Gaza, which is under very, very heavy strikes. But in reality, pauses are never good enough. What is good enough is a ceasefire, a humanitarian ceasefire. To allow, to allow civilians to move around and to allow them to go somewhere and to allow us, the aid workers, to go and assist people where they are. What we've been hearing about in the last four or five days are very, very short uh, openings to allow some of the last people in the north of Gaza to be displaced in the south. So my colleagues at UNRWA, the UN Agency for Palestine Refugees, have seen tens of thousands of people coming from the north to the south, adding to the immense overcrowding that is now in the south of the Gaza Strip, especially in our shelters. Mm. So if you're talking about a ceasefire, how long would that ceasefire need to be? A ceasefire is a ceasefire. It has to be long enough to allow people to move around and to allow real humanitarian assistance to go all over the strip what we have been um what what we have been restricted with is unrwa has only been able to provide bread water medical services in one part of the gaza strip and that is in the south this is not right for an aid agency and for the civilians we need to be able to go all over the Gaza Strip. Mm -hmm. But for the last couple of weeks, the North and the South have been completely cut, with the North completely besieged. And so it has not been possible for us to work like we want to. Now, if nothing changes in the near future, for example, a ceasefire that looks unlikely to happen, what could the situation on the ground look like? Disastrous. It is already catastrophic. We have 1.6 million people out of 2.2, which is the total. So 70% of the Gaza population is now displaced. Most of them, almost 800,000, have taken shelter in schools that my agency, the UN uh, Agency for Palestine Refugees, UNRWA, usually runs. Imagine 6,000 people in a school that is supposed to be for 2,000 students. We have so many of these schools and very little aid going in. You know, the famous trucks that come in from Egypt through the Rafah crossing, they are just a drop in a sea of needs. We get 40, 50,000 trucks per day. This is hardly enough as humanitarian assistance. There's no, we're running out of food, we're running out of clean water, and mostly, we're running out of fuel. And if we completely run out of fuel, we can't even move our trucks to distribute the humanitarian mm. assistance. Tamara Arifai there, Director of External Relations and Communications at the 
You and the United Nations Aid Agency for Palestine Refugees, thank you very much.